Hello again. In this video we're going to talk about the rapture. Um, I guess the first thing to discuss is what it is and what it's about. And we'll see how far we get um, before we look into more detailed things about it. Maybe we'll make another video depending on where this goes. Now don't forget to like share and subscribe to help out the channel smash that like button if you want to see more videos from me uh, just hit the subscribe button and and make sure you hit the notification bell so that uh, my videos will come up on your feed so let's start by looking up in my trusty dictionary from 1935 30s or something Here's another picture from the dictionary I found that I thought you might like. It says, a helicopter which has achieved some notably successful flights in France. This is like the latest in aviation. <laughs> anyway, so let's look up rapture. Rapture, Latin, repair. Raptus, to carry off by force. Enthusiasm, excited imagination, extreme joy or pleasure, ecstasy, transport. Uh, rapturous, transporting, ravishing. Rapturously, with rapture, enthusiastically, ecstatically. Now this is related to the word rape. Rape, Latin, rapier. To seize, a carrying or snatching away, sexual intercourse with a woman against her will. To ravish. So, what does rapture mean? It means that Jesus is going to come and rape us. <laughs> Not really. Um, I think the thing is, is the uh, it's a Latin word, rapture. Rap. It comes from a Latin word. It's probably uh, probably um, has something to do with the Latin Vulgate, because the Latin Vulgate was translated. The Bible was translated into Latin in the. Uh, fifth century. The Latin Vulgate was the basis of the first few English translations and and some of the early translations until the uh, the, the actual manuscripts came out and were, were being used and even then like Bibles like the King James even when they had all the or all the ancient manuscripts they still refer to the Latin Vulgate as uh, checking their translation and keeping it in tune with what's been translated before. That's one of the biggest problems today with Bible translations is there's a tradition of translation that uh, Bible translators will stick with. And oftentimes these traditions are misleading and and kind of ridiculous but maybe they think they won't sell any Bibles if they break from the traditions uh, I, I'm not sure what it is or there is some authority that won't give their stamp on it if it doesn't have these traditions in it but there are a lot of translation traditions anyway so let's get back to rapture So what is the rapture? It all comes from one Bible passage, which is, uh, there's one word, a snatching away, or catching away, that uh, is translated as rapture, or gives um, the name rapture to this, this belief, this doctrine. So let's take a look at it. 
There are about maybe three main verses people uh, will look to when they talk about the rapture. Um, this is the main one, the, the, the number one rapture verse. And it's found in uh, 1 Thessalonians, Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 4, and I, I say from verse 13 to 18. So we'll start, we'll take, let's take a look at it here. Verse 13, this is one of the more important verses in this passage. But I would not have you be, be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. So, when he's talking about them that are asleep, he's talking about the Christians that have died already since they, they lived as Christians and they are dead now. So uh, Jesus referred to death as a sleep. Like Lazarus, he's not dead, he's asleep. The second death is death to Jesus. The first death is asleep. So I guess there was some concern in the community about those which are dead, that you sorrow not. So they, they, they had sorrow for the dead, saying, oh, they're going to miss the second coming. The, the dead are going to miss it, or something like this, right? Even as others which have no hope. So don't sorrow like other people which have no hope sorrow over the dead. Okay? For, for if we believe... Let's just... Blue. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus, God will bring with him. So they're not lost. The, the ones that are dead are not lost. God will rescue them. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. So when God comes, when Jesus comes again, the second coming, like he said, we that are alive shall not prevent them which are asleep. So I guess there was concern that the people who died weren't going to be coming with them or something. But... Uh, the people that are alive shall not somehow hinder the people which are dead when Jesus comes. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven, this is the second coming, Jesus coming down from heaven, with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. Okay? So it's the, the last trump. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. So there's a resurrection of the dead in Christ. So there will be a resurrection. And all the people of the earth will witness this resurrection. And then we which are alive. We Christians which are alive. And remain. So here we're, we're remaining, we're standing there watching this resurrection. We shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So we will be caught up together with them, with the people resurrecting, right? We will also be, after, once the resurrection is done and the whole earth witnesses it, after that, or as a part of that process, the Christians that are alive, not those who call themselves Christians, those that are Christians, they shall be caught up alive with, without dying and caught up into the clouds. And that's when mortality puts on immortality, right? And then, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. 
Therefore, comfort one another with these words. So, that's the rapture is when it says right here, we, we that are alive and remain shall be caught up. This is the word right here, caught up. And what is, it in, what is it in the Texas Receptus? This word here. Let's get the Strong's numbers, turn Strong numbers on. That's why I like this little program. It's pretty quick to look things up. Options, Strong's numbers, on, Bing, this word here. Harpazo. That's that word. <laughs> From a derivative of 138, to seize, to catch away, to pluck, to take by force. Harpazo. Now, this, is, this doesn't say harpazo. This is Strong's numbers are giving you the Latin word, that's not the Greek word, that's the Latin word. This is, I don't, I don't read Greek, but this is ab obviously not harpazo. It's apatheonuia, or something like that. It's not harpazo. Harpazo is the Latin word. Rapture. See, so here's where the confusion comes in, or the deception, however you want to look at it. So that's the cut, the snatching up, the catching away. King James Version shall be caught up, harpazo. So I don't know why they say harpazo. That Greek word doesn't seem to be harpazo at all. Okay, here's John chapter 14, 1 to 3. Let not your heart be troubled. This is Jesus talking. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Now, this is no proof for the rapture. This is just proof for the second coming. The, the, everybody, every Christian believes there's a second coming of Christ. So there's the second coming, okay? But, but there's this, this, this rapture idea is something beyond the second coming. Chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now as this, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So there you go with the people who think that some race is saved. It's not by flesh and blood. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. You see, we shall not all die, but we shall all be changed. Because what did he talk about before? The dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we, we which are alive, if we are alive, th then the ones who are alive will be caught up. Okay. So we shall not all die, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, exact same marker in time, the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruption when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, 
Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which give us the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my brethren, be you steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So what's he saying here that's so rapture-y? He's saying the same thing, is that the, the, the ones who are asleep will rise from the dead, but he's talking here about the ones who are alive when Jesus comes. They will be uh, changed from mortal to immortal in the blinking of an eye as they're lifted up. or no, I don't know exactly when, but it's during that process. And it's at the last trump. The last trump is an important time marker in the Bible. See, this is uh, this this verse, O death, where is thy sting? It's connected to Hosea chapter 13, verse 14. He says, he's talking first, he's talking about uh, the iniquity of Ephraim is bound up. His sin is hidden. The sorrows of a travailing woman shall come upon him. So Jesus said it's just like a, a woman... Um, in childbirth pains is going to be like the end when the second coming of Christ comes. He is an unwise son, for he should not stay long in the place of the breaking forth of children. So in the, in the place where there's childbirth, he will not stay long there. I will ransom them from the power of the grave, I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be your plagues. O grave. This is a plagues. It really means um, uh, trouble or something like that. O death, I will be your trouble. O grave, I will be your destruction. Repentance shall be hid from my eyes. Though he be fruitful among his brothers, Ephraim, an east wind shall come. The wind of the Lord shall come up from the wilderness, and his spring shall become dry, and his fountain shall be dried up. So that's the Ephraim is the Christian nations. Okay? And, and they did not stay long in the place of birth. They did not remember their, their heritage and their spring will dry up. The, the, what, the thing that gives them life will dry up. And it will become desolate. But there is a hope there. God says, I will ransom them from the power of the grave. Um, but it's who God wants to ransom. It's not who we want God to ransom. It's who God wants to ransom. He is the one who will judge each person, whether they go the, here or there. So, you know, like Paul says, make every effort to be found clean or wearing white robes or at least clean as you can be when he comes. Let's take a look at a few passages that I thought we should look at before we dive too far into this. First, First Peter chapter 3, verse 1 to 4. This is the Apostle Peter. Likewise, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by conversation of the wives. While they behold your chaste conversation, cu coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair, and wearing gold, or putting on clothes, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God a great price. So 
So there's a uh, one thing about Christian virtue. It's of the heart. It's not of looking good. It's of the heart. The rapture is basically the second coming of Christ. That's what the rapture is talking about. But now let's take a look at this. In Christianity there's this, uh, this tribulation. Uh, the Bible talks about a tribulation. And so you have, there's a millennium the thousand year period that's spoken of in Revelation and there's a tribulation and and it's just the timing of these things that is say post-tribulation pre-millennialism pre-tribulation pre-millennialism <laughs> post-millennialism amillennialism different opinions about what the Bible is talking about regarding these subjects. Okay? Pre-trib rapture means that there's going to be a catching up of people before the tribulation and then the second coming with the church. So he's coming back with the church for the second coming of Christ. Well, that would actually be a third coming, wouldn't it? So, because they say, well, Jesus never wants us to suffer tribulation. Or we are not children of wrath. Let's take a look at these verses. Okay, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 8 to 10. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we are awake or asleep, we should live together with him. Okay, so they're saying, we are not appointed to wrath, so we will not be in the tribulation. But what they don't understand is that tribulation and wrath are two different things. Being persecuted by the government is not the wrath of God. The wrath of God is repaying the government for persecuting his people. The wrath of God is God's final judgment coming back to repay those who have done all these wrongs to his people and to him. So the tribulation and persecution, those are, um, well, tribulation is slightly different than persecution. Tribulation is, uh, the, it's like the furnace of affliction that purifies his people. So, um, he, he, he puts you through troublous times because it, 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 it strengthens your spirit and makes you grow a strong heart. So that's what tribulation is about. Persecution is when, you know, the devil hates you and he wants to get you. So, but God wants you to be able to stand up against that. So he gives you per tribulation to strengthen you. Okay, so these weak people who don't need any tribulation are going to be out of here and not suffer anything and God's just going to let them, you know, all these weak people just go up there without being tried. So here is a post-tribulation rapture. There's a tribulation, you know, there's Jesus, the cross, then there's the timeline there's a tribulation, and at the end of the tribulation, there's a second coming, and then a millennium. What's the millennium? Well, that's from one verse in the Revelation. Okay, the millennium is right here. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, 
having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. So that's the millennium. That's the thousand years where the devil is not allowed to deceive the people of the earth. And after the th thousand years, he must be loosed a little season. He'll be let out again to, to see that that is in order to test the people that have been lived for this thousand years on the earth without the devil and see if they learned anything or not. The devil will be loosed out to try to deceive them again. Let's see if they can be deceived again. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given to them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, nor his image, neither had received his mark on their foreheads, or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So these are the people who, who uh, basically are the leadership on the earth for that thousand years, while the devil is chained up. And they are teaching the earth for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead live not again. So there's a, there's, there's a, um, the dead that were not beheaded for the mark of the beast, those dead, they live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and he shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, and that's the Gog and Magog war from Ezekiel. Okay? So there's the millennium. It's the thousand years of peace where Christ and his followers rule the earth in peace for a thousand years. So there's, that's the millennium. So we got the tribulation. The tribulation, that is the, the mark of the beast. Anybody who, the, the, nobody can buy or sell without receiving the mark of the beast. And anybody who uh, refuses the mark of the beast will be beheaded. So that's the tribulation. That's, uh, that's great tribulation, <laughs> you know, to say the least. Especially when you have an, a, an electronic world where they can see every, every sale and every deal being made, everything bought and sold on the planet. I don't think we're quite there yet, but we're almost there. I think AI is really going really gonna to accelerate it. Um, but anyway, so the tribulation, we're just, I think we're just coming up to the tribulation. It's just around the corner. And then there's a tribulation, and then the second coming of Christ, which will throw the beast into prison and uh, destroy the kingdoms of the earth. Because when he destroys the kingdoms of the earth, then there will be one kingdom on earth, the kingdom of Christ, for a thousand years. And then during the last judgment, the devil will be let out of his prison to test these people that live through the millennium. He will go out to deceive the nations and there will be one more great war, the Gog and Magog war. So that's sort of how I look at it. Um, now, so I guess I'm a post-tribulational premillennialist. I guess that best describes my view on it. Now here's the other views on it. Pre-tribulation, 
pre-trib rapture guys, okay? So they say there's a second coming for the church. There's a rapture where, you know, the dead don't, aren't raised, but they will be caught up and not have to suffer this tribulation. And they will just be standing, sitting up in heaven with Jesus, watching this happen to everybody else. <laughs> and then there will be a second coming, and then a millennial rule, and then the last judgment. So that's a pre-trib rapture. Post-millennialism are that there will be, they don't even talk about the tribulation, there will be a thousand year rule of peace, this is sort of like a, a Roman Catholic view. This would be some... The Roman Catholics have, don't officially have a statement regarding these things. But this is the, basically a Roman Catholic view. That the, the church, the Roman Catholic Church, will rule for a thousand years in peace. And then there will be the second coming and last judgment so um, so they think it's their um, their ecumenical church you know that they're building it's like a co combination of all the churches in the world under one Pope that's what they see as this millennial rule so that's sort of post millennialism it's uh, classified as and then there's another group or group of churches which are called amillennialists. Oops. Amillennialists. There's Jesus, and the whole thing is a sub symbolic. You see, okay, where do they go here? From the rule of Constantine, right? Constantine, Rome, the persecution ended with Rome, and then there's this symbolic thousand years for a day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day so there's this symbolic uh, the millennium is this symbolic rule of the Roman church all the way through until the last second coming so these these two here are kind of uh, orthodox views and these here, up here, are, are more Protestant views. So you can see where the differences are, right? And this is like a Baptist would believe, any pre-trib rupture people would believe this. And um, I'm, a more, I'm a more traditional Protestant, which this is more, a more, uh, since the 1840s, uh, there was a great, um, great awakening happening in the 1840s. Out of that came uh, came the Seventh Day Adventists, the Jehovah Witness, the Church of God, um, that kind of stuff. But I'm not in any of those churches. I'm just on my own. I just uh, outgrew those things. Um, but I still uh, adhere to this basic timeline because it makes a lot of sense. This one taking taking God's people out of the tribulation, they're the ones who are going, going to refuse the mark of the beast. God's people are the ones who are going to refuse the mark of the beast. These guys, I don't know, they're, they're like sucky babies who don't want any tribulation. They're just going to get raptured out of here. They don't have to pick up their cross and follow Jesus. They're just going to be, you know, they're the, they're the prosperity gospels. That Jesus wants you to be a billionaire. And Jesus wants you to have gold and fancy cars. And he's, he's going to take you out of here before all this tribulation stuff goes on. That's, that's basically that. What I think of that, right? This here is more of, I think, more of a biblical timeline right here. For those who, for those who study prophecy, this is this one makes sense. These this these two down here are for those who don't study prophecy and don't study the Bible much at all, and they they see the church as Christ. 
So that's, that's what those are. Okay, that concludes our video for today. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next week.